So I love knocking around Dave Ramsey a little bit, mostly because he likes making these videos talking about real estate and then he kind of makes these declarations of fact like nobody does x and we've interviewed millions of millionaires and not a single one of them has done y of all the millionaires that we interviewed 10,000 of them jason uh we didn't have one that said you know i made all my money leveraging into my vacation mountain house except for that a lot of people have followed real estate investing strategies and have been successful so i love getting in there and kind of throwing some punches around. And then I love when people come back and they have differing opinions. The one thing I'd like you to note is that I've never knocked Dave Ramsey for his no debt investment strategy. I think that works. In fact, I've even mentioned that as I get closer to retirement, it's probably something I'm going to start leaning into because I want to be in a place where I'm secure, I can retire safely, and I don't have to worry too much for my future or my family's future. But where I'm in a place now where I have a good stable job and career and I can take much more risk and do a lot more, I'm going to take the chances on things that have high returns and I'm going to cover my risk doing smart things like investing in index funds and carrying some cash in case of emergencies. We talked about that in one of the last episodes to make sure that we're nice and safe. I've never done like a favorite comment section or anything, but uh, maybe we should start that. But this is my favorite one so far. Let's check it out. Dragonfly said, so you want us to drop a comment on why we dislike this video? One, you are an a George literally said, quote, don't worry about the numbers right now, end quote. And your comment, quote, oh yes, let's not worry about the numbers at all, end quote. Nope, that's not what he said. Except for he never went back to the numbers. He said, let's forget about the numbers for now and then never came back to the numbers. And I pointed that out in the video because I think it's important that we look at the numbers. You know, you, you can say that even though the numbers work, that maybe that's not a good idea, but you can't say this is a bad idea and we should always ignore the numbers because you gotta kind of show why it is that you're encouraging your audience to do specific things. We are proudly debt-free, no credit score, and couldn't be happier. Well, that's outstanding, Dragonfly, way to go. Of course, I'm sad right now because Hubby happened across this video and played it. Oh, Hubby, what are you doing, man? Coming across random videos of people and playing them? Gosh, man. So while we were watching this video, we were critiquing you and what an a you are. Thanks, guys. I super appreciate it. Just, you know, some random guy trying to make, you know, some YouTube videos to help people out. Don't make any money doing this, but appreciate that you spent the time. Um, making sure I knew that I'm a jerk, apparently. Thanks for taking what George said and twisting it to your agenda. Eh, I don't think I really did that. I mean, I was pretty spot on. Okay, and now I'm going to try to find the time I wasted listening to you. Well, I could tell you that right in the comment didn't save you any time. Welcome back, folks. My name's AJ, and this is The Wealthy Idiot Show. Before we get any further, make sure to destroy the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe, hit that bell, throw down a comment, and let us know what your favorite Dave Ramsey watch and drink is. Last week I said it was rum and coke, um, but I have a little bit of a secret, and I'll tell you at the end if you stick around. And today we found an interesting video, and I, this isn't going to be a terribly controversial one, I don't think. As I was watching this video, I think that I just had some ideas and I really want to express them. I don't know if the watcher is ever going to see it. We did have in one of our videos, uh, the, the people we um, reacted to did respond and, and let us know what, um, that they watched the video. I thought that was really cool and I really appreciate that. that was the devil dog, the Marine from a few videos back. Thought that was pretty neat. This video is called my husband thinks the house I want is too much. Let's get into it and check out the video. Andrea starts off this hour in Dallas, Texas. Hey, Andrea, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Oh, Dave, it's good to talk to you again. You too. Um, thank you for having me on your show. Well, thank you. Um, I don't know. You probably, I don't know if you remember, I actually met you back in 2019 at your studio. My husband and I stopped by, and I, I, I'm a balloon artist. I made a bunch of balloons for your grandkids. Oh, um, thank you. But, uh, Thank yeah, you. I'm, darling, I'm sorry. I've met so many people I can't remember my name. So, But I'm glad oh, you're here. How can right. we help? <laughs> okay. Well, I was hoping you could help me with a, a little disagreement I'm having with my husband. Um, we've been married 10 years, and I um, have listened to you longer and got him on to the uh, 
the total money makeover, and we followed you, and we're able to get debt free. Good. And we like it. He likes it a lot. Good. And but now we are having um, our second baby due in November, and he's having to work from home, and I'm nesting. And we feel like it's time to move up in house, and we have a little bit of a disagreement. I feel like I found like the ideal dream house, and he feels like it's too much, and um, it would it would cause us to have a mortgage again for a little while, and he just he just doesn't want to do that. Mm. All right. So first of all, they're debt free in terms of not even having a mortgage. That's pretty cool. So you know, as much as I am an advocate of debt when it comes to investing into real estate, being debt free is, you know, even though, I mean, I even knocked around that like your own home is not really an investment prop or is, is not really an investment that it's always going to cost you money and there's nothing you can do about that. But the fact that like their entire income can go to their life basically, and they're just paying the bare minimum like taxes and, you know, upkeep, that's pretty cool, you know, for young people. So they're doing great. They're really killing it. The the uh, the one comment I have about like oh you know we need to move up and home and this is the home we're gonna be in forever and it'll be our dream home. Um, the problem with that is that she's having her second child and she's found a home that works. Like, okay, so maybe you think that you're stopping at two and maybe you are stopping at two, but like when you had the one that you know the house that you're currently in was that the house that worked? You know what I'm saying? Like. We oft, I think people do that a little too much. They're like, you know, okay, well, if I only had this, then it would work. Or if I only had that, then it would work. And realistically, what ends up happening is life throws curveballs at you and you've got to roll with it. So, And I'm just like, don't feel like I want to settle when we're going to be in the house hopefully a long time. Mm-hmm. See, that's so, what I said. Um, that's, okay, that's so what is your current home worth? Um, we are hoping after realtor fees that we can get about $300,000 out of it. Um, and what, what seen, would the other house cost? The other house that we're looking at, um, our realtor thinks we could get it if we made an offer for four ninety five. dollars So a, a move of 200000 Do you have any yeah. money saved above the three hundred? We do. We've got our emergency fund of sixteen grand, which we're not going to touch. Correct. And then in other various accounts, we've managed to save up about a little over a hundred grand. Okay, so you're only a hundred thousand so, dollars in disagreement. Basically. Yeah. If you had yeah. another hundred k, would he be okay with the five hundred thousand dollar house? He he would be thrilled with it. His thing is like so some of these things. It's not are, too much house. It's no debt that he wants. Not, Right. It's not too much house. It's no debt. He says. So this is a little bit of the problem that I have with Dave Ramsey is that um, I, he's, I think he's teaching, you know, being debt free is the equivalent as being, you know, having financial peace or having financial freedom. And I don't think that that's true. We broke it down here on this channel before that, like having financial freedom is having the ability to make decisions for your life that aren't restricting you to things that produce your finances. So saying like, okay, well, if we get out of debt, well, then what do we do? Well, we have to have a job and we're going to rely totally on that job. And then we're going to start investing and it's going to take us a lot of years to get the place where we're financially independent. I don't like that. I, I don't think that that's the thing that is taking the weight off of our shoulders. So for example, it'd be like, like, um, like telling people like, you know, it, having a video game addiction is bad for you. And the person's like, yeah, I agree. I'm like, I don't want to be addicted to video games. So they turn on the TV and they just start watching movies, right? You didn't really solve the problem, which is that you're trying to do healthy things with your time. What you did was you just identified something bad that is taking up your time. And just like that, I think that that's what Dave does here. He's identified something bad that causes people not to have financial peace. And then he equates that to like, this is the thing that you have to get rid of. But really financial peace is multi-layered. It has multiple steps. And the biggest one is that financial independent stage. And you can be financially independent with debt. And I know that's tricky, but I think that's the part that he's kind of missing here. So when people watch like this gentleman watches her husband, and gets caught on it and is like, oh yeah, I want to be debt-free and it gets debt-free and he feels good about it. 
But, like, how much does he feel good just because someone told him, like, you should feel good? Like, he's still stuck in that job. He still has to work. He still has to produce. He hasn't found financial independence or freedom. But I've got ideas for him. We're going to keep watching. This house is fancy. It's a want. It's not a need. Yeah. We shouldn't go into debt for a want. Okay. And, um, oh. okay, I, I, I got it. I got it. And so what's your household income? So 2021, we did... Uh, combined, one hundred and one thousand. Mm-hmm. How and quickly can you he, save a hundred um, grand? Mm, I don't know. Um, this isn't going to work. You can't like, yeah. Uh, and um, this this people complain about Dave on this one quite a bit. Like, we got to get a fifteen year loan, so I got to save more, and I got to put at least twenty percent down on that fifteen year loan, and I got to have that you know, giant down payment and I've saved for five years, seven years, 10 years, but housing just keeps going up. I can't ever catch up. That's what's going to happen to them here. If they're not careful, they're going to get into that. Like, Oh, we just need a hundred thousand. Well, then next year, how that, that same house will be worth 600. Okay. Well, we need a 125. And then that next year, you know what I'm saying? I guess it's not a good strategy here. We, I mean, if we less than three years, probably. Two to three um, years. Two and a half years, maybe? Two to three years. Me, me. And then you're telling Andrea, like, she knows that she can get this house now. There's a way to get this house now. She's looking at the information and like, yeah, we could not only just afford it, we could afford it well and our our payment will be low. And then these guys are like, can you wait three years for it? And she's like, yeah, but I'm having the baby like tomorrow. So what am I supposed to do? Maybe. No, yeah, definitely. We're projected to do yeah, definitely. To if you had to do it okay. to save your life, you could save a hundred grand in two years, but three, you could definitely do it. Okay. Because you'd be living on beans and rice again in order to hit this goal, to do two years. Mm-hmm. You know, three yeah. years, you can definitely yep. do it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, or you can pick up. Do you have anything else you can sell? Oh, not nothing that's like worth much. I mean. Look, if you're going to do, I'm all for beans and rice. I've done that before. (laughs) And if you're doing it to get out of consumer debt, like credit card debt or whatever, that's smart. I'm all for it. Knock it out. They don't have that problem. They do not need to be on beans and rice. They can solve this problem much more intelligently. You got you got expensive cars? No, they're, they're used cars and they are paid off and they're, you know, kind of old. And okay, they're not expensive. Down. Okay. What about going to a four hundred thousand dollar house and you pay cash for it? Have you looked into what that would look like? Um, we. No, she didn't say where her other one hundred thousand dollars is, but if it's in a retirement fund, she's not pulling money out of it. So, sorry, George, don't think that one's gonna work. We've, we've um, we're still looking and keeping our eyes open. We haven't ruled it out. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay, so here's the deal. What we're really arguing about is not whether you have too much house. If I'm understanding your outline, what you're really okay. arguing about is the hundred uh, is whether we go in debt or not. Right. And you your husband's going. I finally got free. I can't walk willingly into another bear trap. I can't That's do it. I can't. Em- I can't swallow the pill. Yet, as much as I love you, okay. as much as I want you to have what you want, I just can't go back there. It makes me throw up into my mouth. Right. And That's then what part of saying. me is also like, inflation is going up. And what if I buy too much house and then like, the, the no, country's going crazy and it, then I can't like, feed no, my you don't kids have to worry about something. that. You don't have to worry about that. What you've got okay. to worry about is what you can control. Your bottom okay. line is you guys are arguing about a hundred grand and two to three years. Mm-hmm. That's what you're arguing about. Yeah. You're not really arguing about yeah. whether to move, if moving is valid, whether the $500,000 house is too big a house, uh, whether we're really not arguing about any of those things. We're just a hundred grand short of doing what you want to do, and you're willing to go in debt, and he's not. Correct. That's what it comes down to. And so, That's once good. you quantify it that way, it gives you some real good points for discussion. Um, I, I don't think either one of you are in the stupid zone with this. If you took out a little mortgage and paid it off real fast, it doesn't violate our guidelines. But I've got to personally agree with your husband. Once I got out of debt. You weren't going to drag me back in kicking and screaming under any circumstances. All right. That's the end of the video. All right. Sorry, Andrea. That wasn't a great answer by Dave. He was basically like, if you both want to take out debt, you can both take out debt. Otherwise, you know, if your husband's saying a firm no, wait two to three years, eat rice and beans, and that's what you get. And, uh, yep, 
too bad about that, right? Not a great answer. I've got a couple of ideas and I know that <laughs> Dave's not gonna like any of them, but the numbers work out great. So the first thing that you could do is you could refinance the home that you're currently in. The interest rates are kind of high, but you could get a personal loan on this refinance. You could stay there. So that, you know, cause whenever you get a personal loan, you have to actually spend a year in that property and you could stay in that property. You could take the cash out. You can use that cash to put down on a new property. Then once you move, you rent out the first property, you make that cash flow, and you will more than likely cover the entire mortgage on the second property. And you'll be back at square one where you're basically not paying any income. You're still appreciating that first house that you moved out of. The second house is appreciating and all of it just kind of ends at net zero, right? You don't end at, you don't end at any kind of bills. Nothing bad's really happening there. Um, yeah, I don't think that that's terrible, right? That's probably what I would try and do. I'd, I'd get a spreadsheet, figure out these numbers, make sure that it's right. Because at the end of the day, my thinking isn't really around income versus debt or, or measuring these two things. My thought is around net worth. How do I grow this net worth number at a steady pace in a really intelligent way and not think about it too much? And that's what I want. Because the more net worth I can grow, the more cash will be there when I need it for things that I need. The second thing that you can do, and um, I actually did the math on this one, is take out all the cash from, like sell the first house, take out all the cash. You have $300,000. Go buy this $500,000 home on the biggest loan that you could possibly get. Take all the cash you have left over and dump it into index funds. It offers you the buffer of making sure you have, you know, you'll, you'll have that 400 grand buffer ish. It'll be in the equity of the home and in index funds, plus whatever that 100 grand is on the side. And that will continue to grow year over year. And yeah, you'll have a mortgage, which, you know, kind of stinks, but the appreciation on that home will continue and you'll be able to take all of that into retirement. And then once you hit that retirement stage or close to retirement stage, pay off your home, you'll still be debt free, but now you'll be multimillionaires. In fact, if they were to put a 25% down payment on the new home, that would be $125,000. So that would leave them with 175 from selling their first home, plus the 100 they have now. If they were to stick that into some basic S&P 500 index funds over the next 30 years, so the same length as the loan, they'd end at $4.8 million. $4.8 million. If they invested nothing else, that's what they would have in 30 years. So it just doesn't make mathematical sense to go and suffer when you don't have to in order to get a house that fits your whole family. Like I said, if you're willing to wait that one year, the best option would probably be to finance your current home, get into the new home and rent out that first home. And if you can't wait a year, this is probably the second best option. Both of them require taking out some debt, but you'll get what you want quicker and you'll end with a pretty significant net worth, which is the ultimate goal. So when we get to that kind of money and you start looking at like, what do dividends pay if I was to put my money into dividend paying index funds, dividend stocks, it's like three to 5%. Well, $5 million at 3% is 140 grand a year, 140 grand a year. You know, that's way more financially secure. They would be financially independent. Even if they had debt, they wouldn't really have to worry about where that debt payment is coming from. Or even if it could be covered, if they need to get out of debt tomorrow, they would be totally secure and safe. So I'm sorry, Dragonfly. I know that this answer probably didn't go along with what you were saying. I'm not against what Dave is saying here. I'm just saying there are more options out there that can help people out. And maybe Andrea can take some of this information to her hubby and let her hubby know that, uh, you know, hey, here's some strategies we can use to become financially independent. So thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it, guys. I'm sorry for all the Dave Ramsey fans that I'm annoying. I'm really not trying to do that. I'm just trying to point out other options that I think are still safe, still secure, and are producing people great wealth. And so thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Oh, last, I told you I had a little secret. It turns out that I didn't have rum and Coke last time. I had rum and diet Dr. Pepper. That's the trick. There is like not a lot of drinks out there that match that rum and diet Dr. Pepper. Give it a try. You're not going to regret it. Tell me what you think about it. Throw it down in the comments. I appreciate it. I'll see you guys next time.